Hey, what's up YouTube's me Andrew here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all new ASUS Republic of Gamers G750 JM 17.3 inch laptop. All right, let's get started. For 2014, ASUS has refreshed one of its popular gaming laptops known as the Republic of Gamers G750 series. ASUS has decided to keep the same design as the previous generation, however, this year you get the latest NVIDIA 800 series graphics cards, an all new copper GPU heatsink, and now ASUS has included a utility called ASUS GPU Tweak, which will allow you to safely overclock your GPU by 5%. Alright, let's go ahead and break down the specs for the model I have here. This laptop features an i7-4700HQ processor, 8GB of RAM, 17.3 inch LED backlit high definition display, 1TB hard drive. For the integrated graphics, we have an Intel HD 4600, and for the dedicated graphics, we have an NVIDIA GTX 860M with 2GB of GDDR5 memory, which is based off the Maxwell architecture. Also keep in mind the G750JS series features an 870M with 3GB of GDDR5 memory and the G750JZ series features an 880M with 4GB of GDDR5 memory. Alright now let's get back to the JM series. This laptop features Microsoft Windows 8.1 and the retail price is $12.99 US. Alright let's get this review started by starting off with the boot up test. Alright let's get started. Republic of Gamers logo, still booting up, logging in now, and Hourglass still spinning, and we're done. So this laptop booted up in about 15 to 16 seconds, which is about average for your traditional 5400 RPM hard drive. Alright, let's go and take a look at the design and build quality of the new ASUS Republic of Gamers G750 series. Let's take a look at the rear here. It goes with two massive vents for your GPU and CPU. Let's take a look at the sides. This is one big bulky laptop. However, the design and build quality is top notch. Here's the soft touch finish on top. Let's take a look at the bottom side now. Here you got your 8 cell battery pack on top and your subwoofer on the bottom right. This laptop measures 9.9 .9 pounds and the thickest point is 2 inches. Next up, let's take a look at the ports here on the left side of the laptop. Here you got your Kensington lock, two USB 3.0 ports, a DVD drive, you can also get a Blu-ray drive on the Jay-Z and JS model, and an SD card reader. Let's take a look at the ports here on the right side now. Here you got your AC charging port, VGA port, Gigabit Ethernet port, full-sized HDMI output, Thunderbolt port, two USB 3.0 ports, a microphone port, and your headset slash SPDIF port. This laptop features a 17.3 inch Full HD LED backlit panel that's non-IPS. The resolution is 1920 by 1080. This anti-glare display has been great. It has reduced glare dramatically, which will benefit many of you gamers. Let's go and take a look at the color accuracy on this panel now. Let me go and load up some images here. Text and images look very sharp. One of the best gaming panels I have ever tested. Let's go and take a look at these pictures. Take a look at those colors there. Very nice and vivid. Now we're going to test out the viewing angles on this non-IPS display by rotating the laptop to the right side. Alright, here we go. So far pretty visible. Still pretty visible now. Again, one of the best non-IPS display viewing angles I've ever tested. Let's go and tilt the display all the way back and see how far it goes down. And that's at 100% right there. Let me go ahead and zoom in on some text right here so you can see the details. As you can see here, it's very sharp. Very good for a 1080p panel. The brightness levels on this HD panel were very good. Sometimes I would have to find myself turning the brightness levels down just to be at a comfortable position. This laptop features an Elon trackpad that has been extremely responsive and precise. Let me give you a demo of the trackpad in action. Let me try to scroll down here. Very smooth. Take a look at that. Let's go ahead and test out the pinch to zoom here on this trackpad. So far the pinch to zoom is not as smooth as the two finger scrolling, however it will get the job done. The processing power from the Intel i7-4700HQ has been outstanding. With a base clock speed of 2.4GHz and a turbo boost up to 3.4GHz, this laptop just begs to be pushed. Overall this laptop is a beast. And to prove that, let's go and take a look at some Geekbench 3 performance scores. This is a 64-bit version here. For the single core score, I got 3,217. 
And for the multi-core score, I got 12,368. And for Cinebench R15, I got a CPU score of 640 CB. Alright, let's go and talk about one of the main attractions of the show, the all-new NVIDIA GeForce GTX 860M, which is based off the Maxwell architecture. The version I have here is GM107, which has 2GB of GDDR5 memory. The new 860M is engineered to consume significantly less power, while still matching or even sometimes beating the performance of last year's 770M, which is based off the Kepler series. And here are some benchmarks of the new 860M. For Cinebench R15, I got an OpenGL score of 94.62 frames per second. For our 3D Mark benchmark, we're going to take a look at Firestrike and Skydiver. Alright, here we go. For Firestrike, I got a score of 3,993, and for Skydiver, I got a score of 12,716. With these kind of scores, you can expect to play many of today's high-end games like Battlefield 4, Titanfall, and Bioshock for example, on high settings. However, with that being said, if you plan on playing many of today's high-end games on ultra settings, then I'll either jump up to the 870M or the 880M, which is the top-of-the-line mobile graphics card for 2014. Alright, enough of these benchmarks, let's go and test this A60M out by launching Titanfall. And here goes my graphic settings for Titanfall. Everything else is set to high besides shadow detail, which is set to medium. Also keep in mind you can track the frames per second here on the top left. Alright, let's get this party started. So right now the game is running about 35 to 38 frames per second. Let me go and try to take this Titan down. Oh, come on now. Right now the frames per second are around 45 to 48 frames per second. Now we're back to 60. Move away from my Titan. Looks like the frames are dropping now. We're about 31 frames per second. 28. Back up to 35. Uh oh, look like we just dipped to 24 frames per second. Oh no, we're back up and running now. So far it's pretty smooth. So far the 860M is holding its ground on high settings. The only time I see the frame dips is when two titans are going at it. So at 30 frames per second. Take a look at this detail right here in the explosion. Wow. Beautiful. Take a look at all this action going on and it's still holding about 30 frames per second. With normal usage without any gaming, the highest CPU temperature was around 60 degrees Celsius. Now let's put some pressure on the quad-core i7 chip and see how it performs. After about an hour of gameplay, the CPU temperature was around 69 degrees Celsius, which is still very efficient. After about an hour of gameplay, the hottest GPU temperatures I got was around 71 degrees Celsius. You can thank the combinations of the new 860M, the new copper-based GPU heatsink, and those two massive heat vents in the back. Even during long periods of extended gameplay, the all-new 860M remained extensively cool while put under pressure. I was amazed at how cool the keyboard and the palm rest felt during hours and hours of gameplay of Battlefield 4 and Titanfall. Overall, Asus has done an excellent job on the cooling system of the all-new G750 series. With these kind of GPU temperatures, you can expect years and years of gameplay without any issues. The fan noise levels on this laptop were very good. For most of the time, I didn't even hear the fan. The only time I was able to hear anything was during extended gaming. The battery performance on this laptop has been pretty good. On average, I'm able to get around 4.5 to 5.5 hours out of a full charge with screen brightness at around 60%, and that's with no gaming. This laptop features a 1TB hard drive running at 5400 RPM. Let's go and test out the benchmarks by using Crystal Dismark. For the sequential read speed, I got 102.8 megabytes a second. And for the sequential write speed, I got 93.56 megabytes a second. For better performance, you can either upgrade the main hard drive to an SSD or use the secondary hard drive slot to add an SSD. The performance from the Broadcom 80211 AC wireless card has been very good. I have not experienced any connection issues or dropouts. Even during my Titanfall matches, the connection was solid. The speakers on this laptop were good. There are two speakers under the keyboard and one subwoofer facing the bottom. While the sound levels may not be that loud, the sound quality was good enough to complement your gaming performance. And with the max audio sound equalizer settings, you can adjust the sound quality based on your preference. 
The keyboard on the all new Asus G750 has been impressive. Typing on it has been comfortable and playing games has been an enjoyable experience. You get a standard full size keyboard as well as an island style numeric keypad. Let me go and show you the key travel here in action. This keyboard offered excellent tactile response and feedback. Overall great performance from the keyboard. Thank you Asus. Now let's test out our backlight keyboard. Here you got your low setting, medium setting and your high setting. To make it easier on your eyes, Lenovo chose to go with a traditional super white lining instead of a blue or red lining found on other gaming laptops. The G750JM series from Best Buy features 8GB of RAM, however this CPU can support up to 32GB of RAM. As you can see from this picture, there are only two DIMM slots that are easily accessible. The other two are located by the motherboard. To access those, you'll have to remove all these screws surrounding the laptop. If you don't feel like removing all these screws in order to access the other two DIMM slots by the motherboard, then you'll just add two 8GB DIMM sticks here in order to get 24 gigabytes of RAM. Alright, this concludes my full review on the all new ASUS G750 JM series laptop. If you're looking for one of the best gaming laptops on the market that feature one of the best 1920 by 1080p panels, then look no further than the all new ASUS Republic of Gamers G750 series. Now if you got a lot of cash to burn, then I would recommend getting the G750 JZ model, which features two 256 gigabyte solid state drives, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and you get the NVIDIA GTX 880M which features 4GB of GDDR5 memory. The 880M is NVIDIA's top of the line mobile graphics card for 2014. And the Jay-Z model retails for $3000 US. Be sure to leave me a comment down below on what you think about the all new ASUS Republic of Gamers G750 series laptops with the all new NVIDIA 800 series graphics cards. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit that like button and please subscribe for more content just like this one. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace.